Coast Guard buoy tender Cactus departed for Cop Seamount on July 27, 1970 at 0800 hours, having loaded equipment and personnel for the sea use diving team during the preceding weekend. The mission of this operation was to obtain three five-foot-long magnetically oriented rock cores using a new remote-controlled underwater drilling rig developed by Ocean Systems Incorporated. Then to cement in a 4.5-foot rock bolt in each core hole and attach a collar and ring bolt. And then to test one of these anchor bolts to failure. This operation was complicated by the logistics involved. Cobb Seamount rises from a 9,000-foot abyssal plain to within 110 feet of the ocean surface. It is situated 270 miles due west of Grays Harbor, Washington, in the open Pacific Ocean, with no refuge from ocean weather within 250 miles. Upon arrival at Cobb Seamount at approximately noon on July 28, 1970, Cactus deployed a Type A mooring buoy about 500 yards due east of the reflector buoy, which had been moored to a clump during a previous expedition in May of 1970. In addition to implanting the buoy, Cactus also laid a chain highway along the east-west axis and along the entire length of the pinnacle. This chain highway was marked off at 100-foot intervals with both paint symbols and floating plastic tags, and served as a reference system throughout the entire operation for diver orientation on the pinnacle. Since then, this chain highway has proved to be a major asset in all continuing Cobb Seamount operations. This part of the operation consumed the remaining daylight hours of the 28th. As a result, it was impossible to deploy a third buoy to provide the three-point moor as had been programmed in the operations plan. Although this did not result in any failure to the mission, it did cause some early delay in the rock coring operations. Washington State National Guard freighter FS-313 departed from Seattle on July 27th with the hydraulically operated coring rig and personnel provided by Ocean Systems and the hydraulic test pulling jack and personnel from Foundation Sciences. Shortly after rendezvous at Cobb Seamount between Cactus and FS-313, a conference was held on board the freighter to detail the commencement of operations. FS-313 picked up a two-point moor between the reflector and Class A buoy her position being as close to the eastern end of the pinnacle and the Class A buoy as possible. Cactus steamed in the immediate vicinity until the evening of that day, offering berthing, messing, and logistics support to the sea use diving team and to the FS personnel. Transfers of personnel and equipment were carried out using the expedition's inflatable Avon Red Seal boats.
morning of July 30th, at first light, FS-313 and Ocean Systems personnel began operations by hoisting the coring rig out of the ship's hold, testing and rigging the hydraulic assembly, and preparing the drill for underwater operations. All tests were completed by mid-afternoon, with the rig in place on the Seamount Pinnacle. Ocean Systems hard hat divers suited up and coring commenced using the remote panels on the FS-313. Due to the failure of the remote penetration indicator on the instrument panel aboard the ship, indications were that the coring was going extremely slow. After approximately two hours with a surface indication by instruments of only about one and a half inches of penetration, one of the Ocean System divers descended to inspect the rig and tried to determine the reasons for the very slow progress. then discovered that the indicators were defective and that the drilling had already penetrated the basalt to a depth of 4.5 feet. Driver using local controls on the rig, the remainder of the coring was completed in very short order. The coring drill and a magnetically oriented core were removed, and grouting was forced into the core hole using a specially designed cement injector. This injector consisted of a hollow tube containing the amount of grout designed for emplacement with an air pressure bottle connected to the end of the tube through a hand-operated valve. The expulsion of the compressed air forced the cement into the core hole throughout its length without significant dissipation of grouting material into the water environment. Once the grouting was exhausted into the core hole, a rock bolt was implanted. The collar and shackle on the rock bolt, as can be seen from the diagram, was screwed into place. Two additional holes were drilled and two more anchor bolts were cemented in on subsequent days.
drilling rig had been connected to the ship by a lifting cable during the operation. But due to rotation of the coring rig as it was suspended over the side of the entire two and a half day operation, recovery of the rig was delayed due to the tangled cables. Scuba divers worked alongside with hard hat divers in an effort to unsnarl the mess, but recovery was affected only by severing all connections to the rig except the hoisting cable. Immediately following the recovery of the ocean systems drill, the Foundation Sciences hydraulic jack was lifted over the side of FS-313 to be positioned on Cobb's pinnacle in the vicinity of the number two rock bolt. The freighter then broke her moor, buoyed the mooring housers, and sailed for Seattle, arriving at Pier 91 on August 3. Cactus was successful in picking up Three Point Moor in the face of a freshening wind and the onset of darkness immediately after the departure of FS-313. Dives began promptly by the Sea Use Aquanauts and the Foundation Science Scuba Divers on the morning of August 2, beginning with the correct positioning of the hydraulic puller over number two anchor bolt. The divers experimented with maneuvering the puller underwater and determined that the operation could be conducted without a lifting cable from a shipboard winch. By the time the ram was connected to the anchor bolt and the anchor bolt shackle, the cement grout had set for about 72 hours. As the bolt failure test was dependent upon scuba divers, the sea use and foundation science personnel dived in relays in teams of two. Underwater TV was utilized to enable topside personnel to evaluate the effectiveness of the anchor bolt failure test. A total of 12 dive missions were involved in the failure tests, culminating in failure of the anchor system at 110 tons of vertical pull. The first team of divers operating the hydraulic puller loaded the bolt in 40,000 pound increments, obtaining a dial gauge reading of displacement at each increment up to 200,000 pounds and then relax the pull in 40,000 pound decrements to develop information on energy storing capabilities, the percentage of elastoplasticity of material, and the unloading modulus. During this operation, a minor casualty in the hydraulic pump operation occurred requiring two more teen dives for correction. This was followed on successive dives by conducting loadings to 100,000 and then 200,000 pounds then loading to 220,000 pounds, at which point the bolt anchor was withdrawing. At failure, the total ram extension was one and three quarter inches, and the total bolt withdrawal was one and a half inches. The hydraulic pulling pressure gauge dropped to 40,000 pounds after the anchor failure, and then held steady, indicating some residual holding capability after failure. secured by noon August 4 and Cactus spent the remainder of that day retrieving the buoys. She departed for Astoria, Oregon on the evening of August 5, 1970. Results obtained indicated complete success for the operation. The expedition retrieved three magnetically oriented rock cores approximately 55 inches long by 2 and 1 inches in diameter 
and one 24-inch core. Three anchor bolt assemblies were successfully grouted into the core holes on Cobb's pinnacle. Excellent engineering data was obtained pertaining to coring operations, particularly in the hard basalt, and permanent anchors were established on Cobb's pinnacle, which will facilitate future operations.